Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. Of course, I'm with my guy, Lucky, the Amazon tree boa, and of course, he's an arboreal snake. And of course, I was thinking about this. Like, why do arboreal animals seem to just be a little bit more touchy when it comes to handling? I mean, not all of them are that way, but a lot of them are definitely like Lucky here, where you've got to really watch out what you're doing because they just love to strike, and that's because they are so absolutely reactive. And of course, I always talk about animals like pickles here, the biak, green tree python. And I say that they're kind of like the fish of the reptile world. And what I mean by that is that you put them in a tank and you really admire them. That doesn't mean that they're all mean and aggressive and that they all want to bite you. Certainly you can't handle them, but they're not really set up for that. They really want to stay in a branch. They want to sit like this and they can really be quite amazing when it comes to setting up some beautiful habitats for them. And they're always perched like this and look absolutely incredible. But you know, the real question is, is that why are green tree pythons, emerald tree boas, Amazon tree boas, and all the arboreal lizards as well. A little bit more touchy when it comes to handling. Take for instance baby kush. Of course these guys are known as tree dragons in Indonesia. They're an arboreal lizard. Let's just kind of take a second and think about why would a crocodile monitor or an emerald tree boa or an Amazon tree boa be a little bit more kind of touchy when it comes to this. And really what it is is that they're more reactive, right? Because you got to remember when baby Kush is up in a tree here and a bird comes by or something that is prey comes by he's got to react immediately right he can't think about it he can't go like okay so what's the deal what is this I'm gonna slowly methodically go about it they've got to pounce on every opportunity because that opportunity may not come back very often and you can see he's completely looking at me and he's reactive right now and if I got very close he would absolutely react towards me now that doesn't mean that you can't tame a boreal animals Certainly baby Kush is a little touchy, but we're going to get him. I promise you in the next six or eight months, we'll be able to handle baby Kush and touch him and all that type of stuff. And he's going to be completely fine. But you have to understand that arboreal animals react, then they think. They don't think and then they react. And that's oftentimes why they can be a little bit more touchy. Whereas you certainly see the difference when it comes to the kind of more ground dwelling animals like Elvis. You know, quite frankly, the croc monitor and the water monitor may have the same intelligence or at least both very highly intelligent. The difference is, is that Baby Kush, the croc monitor, is very reactive, right? Whereas Elvis, you can see, he's very thoughtful, right? He's looking around, he's thinking things out. He's not like in a position where he's like, I'm gonna attack or I'm gonna do something quick. It's more like I'm gonna methodically think things through and then after I methodically think things through, I'm gonna make decisions. And in this case, his decision is just to kind of sit here, you know, smell around, think about things before he comes out, and then eventually he'll come out and hang out with us and stuff like that. But again, Baby Kush, different. If I was to go like that with Baby Kush, immediately it would lunge at me because it's a arboreal animal. And again, by nature, it only has a split second to make a decision of either getting food or not getting food. Whereas the majority of Elvis's food in the wild, he's really gonna scavenge. You know, sometimes it'll be a fish, sometimes it'll be a dead animal that it finds, sometimes it will chase some stuff down. But the fact is it doesn't have to be quite as reactive, right? But nonetheless, both are absolutely incredible animals. There's just two extremely different experiences when it comes to arboreal animals and ground dwelling animals. Remember those little baby mangroves that we hatched out about two months ago? Well, they're doing absolutely incredible. And again, when they're hatched, they're kind of more of a brownish look, not quite as black, right? Well, these guys have now blackened up and that yellow is just coming through really, really beautifully. And they're doing really well. You know, the first couple years we hatched these guys out, we struggled getting them to eat and to really do well and thrive. Now they are just crushing it. We've kind of finally sorted out how to do it. Every single baby is eating like crazy, doing well absolutely amazing. It's definitely a great like entry level venomous snake, right? These are rear fang. They're mildly venomous. They do bite. I'm not going to lie to you oftentimes. So you have to be a little bit careful, but they have to really chew on you to envenomate you. And most people, myself included, that have been envenomated twice now by these guys really have very small reactions. I had some kind of puffiness, you know, stuff like that. Nothing too much, you know, lightheadedness, that type of stuff. But nevertheless, it's really cool that we've hatched a bunch of these and we actually have five or six eggs that are due to hatch here in the next two weeks or so. I think we have 20 something mangroves now and we just keep them all every time we hatch it for some reason. So eventually I'll probably have to start selling them because I'm going to have a really big group of 
of mangroves, but they're just absolutely wonderful snakes and I love them so much it's hard for me to want to get rid of them. So maybe after this year, next year, if I produce more, uh, we'll finally have them for sale, I guess. But nevertheless, definitely loving these guys. Another really cool entry level kind of rear fang venomous snake is of course, the false water cobra. And I just gotta find out where it is. And here this little monkey is. I'll be honest, when I first take it out, it does do kind of, it kind of spins around, gets all, oh, it just bit me, oh, it got me. That's okay, it just got me. But again, these guys are rear fang, and they're just a little crazy when they're, when they're just coming out. For whatever reason, he gets a little bit wily. And again, it just barely got me. No big deal, definitely didn't sink those back fangs into me or anything like that. So I don't have to be worried about it, but holy moly, this thing is wild all of a sudden. All right, I'm gonna just try to calm it down. Calm down, little monkey, calm down. And oftentimes it just takes a little bit to kind of calm it down. And now it's starting to act a little bit better. Now I'll be honest with you, these guys again have pretty mild toxin. They have to really get into you with their rear fangs. This one just barely did. See how it's, it's hooting up? That's why they call it a false water cobra, as it can hood just like a cobra which is pretty interesting but these guys typically can stay pretty docile i mean usually if you handle these guys a lot when they get older they become super super tame and super good animals and i tell you what like i said these guys are definitely nice animals typically but this one's just in a cranky mood today for some reason i'm not gonna lie to you i've handled this snake a lot of times and it's never tried to bite me before and not only did it try to get me it got me just barely right there but also it kind of has been working on biting me a few more times when it comes around i have to just kind of avoid it i don't know it just woke up on the wrong side of the cage today but normally a very cool entry level venomous snake because usually you can handle these guys almost like a corn snake and listen it's just having a bad day it's okay i'll spend a little more time handling it and you can see it's already starting to calm down it's already starting to get good these guys get pretty big they can literally get you know six seven foot long so it's pretty awesome animal and you can see where it just got me right here but it didn't look like it sunk its rear fangs and it was just kind of the front fang nip real quick not long enough to kind of get any kind of envenomation or anything like that so nevertheless uh, definitely a cool animal but one you have to be a little careful of whenever you're dealing with anything that has a little toxin you have to be a little bit more careful but as you see now it's saying how good so wow i tell you what that, that sucker he was on fire today but what a beautiful snake huh this is just a cool little genetic clutch to be honest with you these are double head ghost clown ball pythons right here and then these two here are actually two little ghosts or what they would call hypo recessive mutation that are het for clowns so ghost head clowns double head ghost clowns genetically they have a cool kind of thing going on so you could produce some really cool clown stuff in the future but nevertheless these guys are really awesome the ghost ones and uh, i'm always happy to hatch babies down the road this next generation of ghost clowns are going to be epic bunch more babies here that are hatched out this is actually a pastel to a woma lesser pinstripe so these are woma lesser pinstripes right here this is actually a little king pin here another woma lesser pin we have a lemon blast right here and then just a whole bunch of other stuff but this is actually the the all gene animal here which is the pastel woma lesser pinstripe so a, a bunch of really cool little baby snakes again these last clutches have been huge you know like 10 20 12, 13 eggs. We had a lot of big clutches this year, which means there's a lot of babies. So we have to set all these babies up individually. We'll let them shadow take about seven to 10 days before they shed out. Then they usually eat within a day or two then they're up. And then uh, we get two meals into them before they get on the website. So keep the eye on bhbreptiles.com because there's gonna be some banger ball pythons all year long. It's absolutely crazy how big my boy Big Mac here is getting in Chicken Nugget, of course his girlfriend here. These are the little baby prillies. I haven't shown them in a while and they have gotten so big. These were born in September of last year so they're coming up on a year old and of course we hatched a couple little babies this year. They are so tiny but it's just amazing how quickly they grow and again this is a male and female and with any luck hopefully Lilith will have one more clutch and we can hatch out some more babies this year. It'd be really amazing. I'd like to raise up a nice little group of these guys especially because when you get these guys as babies like these were and you start socializing them right away holy moly do they become docile i mean normally frill dragons that are imported they are not like this i mean they will not just chill out on you be cool hang out so it's pretty cool to have the experience to have these animals and again nova and lilith are amazing you know lilith is a little crazy she's typical like frill dragon style but nova is amazing and certainly his temperament passed on to these babies and they are absolutely wonderful little update on heinz the 
albino iguana, of course the crimson albino. Remember he lost his tail right here? Look at that, you can really hardly tell that he lost his tail. I mean, it's completely grown back. It looks absolutely incredible. And because he's an albino, it kind of blends in well. If it was a green, you would definitely see a different color, but thankfully with the albino, it's pretty cool. And again, he is starting to tame out pretty good. You know, you gotta work with him a little bit. He gets a little bit feisty when you first take him out, but we're trying to habituate these guys. And typically, if you remember Diddy and Dixie when they were this size, they were pretty crazy too. But iguanas, oftentimes when you work with them when they get older, do tame out. Now, I'm gonna be totally honest with you. The green iguanas, sometimes when they hit maturity, especially males, can be a little bit crazy and territorial. That's why we have to work with these guys a lot in order to habituate them and keep them social. But if we can, they are amazing animals and they're going to be super cool and I hope that these will be another animal that we can take out for people throughout their entire life to be honest with you because they are absolutely wonderful and because they don't have great eyesight they typically are a little bit more docile than the normal green iguana or like the red face like sriracha and tabasco because these guys are a little bit crazy right but these guys are wonderful and I cannot be more happy with the way this tail grow back because it just makes it look absolutely amazing so these guys just get better and better with age we've had this little vinegaroon now for the last couple weeks and it's absolutely been a huge hit here at the reptarium for sure and these guys are in the whip scorpion family and this guy is definitely all over the place but the thing that's really nice about these again is the fact that you can mess with them and you don't have to worry at all about getting stung or pinched or anything like that the worst that happens is you get this smell and this is the first time that it's actually scented on me that vinegar smell and it literally smells just like vinegar but nevertheless like I said this guy has been an absolute hit here at the Reptarium and these guys can live like 20 25 years so that's pretty cool it should be around a long time and it's just a really wild weird animal and I absolutely love it you guys know that I haven't been a bug person my whole life but I really have started to come around and I'm starting to really enjoy these things oh my gosh this thing is on the move today normally it chills out in your hands but today it is walking around like crazy but uh, definitely a cool little addition to the Reptarium got some more baby colubrids hatching let I me mean, I tell you what every time I see it out albino milk snake it is stunning to me I mean I again was around back when albino milk snakes were huge money so I mean when we first saw the first albino milk snakes back in the 90s it was like crazy and I still get shocked by them every time I see them the difference now is that they're relatively affordable which is cool because back in the day these guys here were two thousand dollars a piece now they're like 100 150 bucks depending on which ones you get so they're absolutely crazy I mean to think a snake can be that beautiful is ridiculous all right we've got Frenchy bullies. Hmm. Oh, I wonder wait what a this second. might be. You, you think know this what? Is for Noah? Uh, I don't know, Noah but I know. Noah loves French yes. bulldogs. I think that uh, both Noah and I went back and forth with this guy on Instagram. Ugh. We got a shirt. We got multiple shirts. What do we got? A note. Noah's gonna love this. Brian and Lori, been a longtime follower of Snake Bites in the vlog. You guys' dedication and commitment is inspiring to me. I know you not only love your reptiles, but love all types of animals. Well, Noah's favorite dog is a French Bulldog. Yep. So Here's you guys gotta Hope stuff. you like them. Well, Noah's gonna love this one for sure. I'll give it to him because he's gonna love it and you get yours. So right. I don't think I'll, I'll look good in this one. Actually, Actually maybe try it. Yeah, let's see it. What do you think? Sexy. Let's show off my my, my traps. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is that what they are? <laughs> yeah, no, no. Let's move on. Up here we have oh another interesting. We just got one, one of the these. Same person or a different person? I don't know if this is from the same person or not that we had the other day. This is the same mug. My boyfriend is a fan of yours. Doesn't know I'm doing this. I think Amazon. This is like the second time that <laughs> Amazon has sent us two of the same thing. Really? So I have a feeling Amazon has now done. Yeah, that's right. We got the strainers. The strainers. Uh, last double the cups. same thing, same thing, same note, same everything. Well, so, we each get one. Now we each have one. We got matching That's cups. That's awesome. Do not let Brian open this box. Must be opened carefully. <laughs> Come on. All right. I'm glad well, I had off, my glasses on and read that. Oh. Whoa. What the? That got scary. That freaked me out. <laughs> Jesus. Bruce, this is for you. <laughs> that thing is Throw it's like, it's that like, thing away. What the hell like, is it? Is this like origami? Is oh that what that is? God, yeah, dude. Oh, that, that is, is dope, man. What? That is super cool. Seriously, oh, that, that takes some talent. Cool. 
I know this doesn't look much like your Goody Sapphire, but I try. I mean, His legs can be moved in other positions, what makes it look like what? walking. It's it is terrifying. creepy as heck, but I terrifying. love it. I but think I it's do like amazing. this because it says some stuff about you, but it said, Lori, you have the patience of the gods. I commend you every day for not inflicting bodily harm on dear Brian. <laughs> I so. like the dear Brian part. That's the only thing that I heard is dear Brian. Yeah, Th yeah. Thank you guys so much. You guys ready? We that still have more crazy. boxings. We'll do that Thank in the next you. couple days. Oh. <laughs> well, it was interesting. That was the first bite I've ever taken from a false water cobra. Thankfully, it was a little nip. Nothing happened. I'm completely fine. And now you guys kind of understand a little bit why arboreal animals are a little bit more aggressive, right? Because they're reactive and uh, they have to to survive. So it's pretty cool. And they are amazing animals and they can be tamed. So I don't want you guys to think that arboreal animals are bad because they can be absolutely amazing. If you enjoyed this video, here's another video right here. I think that you guys will absolutely enjoy. Up here, can you do me a favor? Subscribe to the podcast channel called Checking In. On this side, you can subscribe to this vlog channel. Please turn your post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.